Again, welcome to Java Programming 1 course. This is our Unit 1, Part 3 lectures. And these lectures will focus on object-oriented programming concepts. And what is an object-oriented programming? So the purpose of writing a program again is to solve a problem. And we know solving problem consists of multiple activities in terms of a software development process. Uh, if we want to develop a software to solve a problem, then we need to follow some techniques. There are so many different types of techniques as we mentioned in the previous lectures. Uh, one of the techniques here is the waterfall model. So we have some few steps here. Uh, for example, solving a problem consists of multiple activities. The first activity is to understand the problem. I think that's very important, understanding the problem. Without understanding the problem, again, solving it is impossible. And I always mention to students that students taking programming courses that the syntax, to study the syntax or the grammar, uh, grammatical concept of programming is very easy. For example, we know to print something on the screen, I use the system.out.println or the println method with the system class. But to understand the problem and solving it, that's all it's about in programming. That's trying to develop the algorithm to solve the problem. That's the main subject or the main concern of a, a computer scientist or study computer science. So first, understanding the problem, then we need to design the solution. So understanding the problem, we can do something called a requirement analysis. We try to analyze the problem. What should be the input to the, the problem that we want to solve or the problem that the program is going to solve? What would be the input and also what would be the output? Now, transforming the input to output is where the design issue comes in. So we have to design the solution. Then we have to implement the solution after we can come out with the design. Implement the solution means writing the code. Now we are going to develop the software. Then we have to test the solution. These activities, again, they are not linear. Uh, it can be overlapping and interacting. So I can start with understanding the problem, I design a solution, but we find out that no, the solution is not giving us the right output or the right result. So we have to go back again to design the algorithm and by doing that means we have to go to the requirement analysis again now try to understand the problem very well or we may go through understanding the problem designing the solution implement the solution then when we test the code the solution the output is not right so this means we have to go back to maybe any of the steps either we do the process of designing we made a mistake or during the requirement analysis, we understood the problem in a different way. So problem solving, as we said earlier, that is the key to design a solution. And I'll say actually problem solving is the main skill a computer programmer or even a system analysis, a computer science student should study to, to know. So the key to design a solution is breaking it down into manageable pieces. This means that if we have a problem and the problem is very large, we do something we call the divide and conquer. So we are going to break down the problem into a smaller units, which will be more easy to, again, solve. Now, when we solve each unit, later on we can integrate the whole problem or the program together as one unit. So the key here is very important. Designing the solution is always breaking it down into manageable pieces. Breaking the complex problem into a smaller unit, it's more easy to solve each unit than trying to solve the whole big problem at once. Also, when writing a software, we always design separate pieces that are responsible for certain parts of the solution. And an object-oriented approach lends itself to this kind of solution decomposition. 
the concept of decomposition means we have a very big problem and we're going to break it down into smaller units. And that's the whole concept of object-oriented techniques or approach. Uh, we will dissect our solution to a pieces called the objects and classes. So here we have to understand what is an object and also what is a class. First, we know Java is an object-oriented programming language, which means a Java program always consists of at least a class, so one class, which will be the main class. And the concept of a class is uh, it's more or less like a template of uh, any entity. And a class always consists of two things, the state and the behavior. So the state will be the characteristics or the attributes of the entity. And the behavior will be the method or the action of the entity. So let's give one simple example. Let's say we have a, a vehicle. We can create a, a class named vehicle. Then from there, we can create an object, let's say a car. And we know a car can have different characteristics. An example can be the model of the car or the color of the car. Uh, how many doors the car have, how many wheels, etc. Now the action of a car can be, or the method can be, we can drive the car, we can park the car, we can even wash the car. So those are the actions. So again, Java is an object-oriented programming language. And as the term implies, an object is a fundamental entity in a Java program. And objects also can be used effectively to represent a real world entities. So example I gave us a vehicle, we can have an object of employee, a person, student, etc. So an object has, as we said earlier, two things. The state. The state will be the descriptive characteristics, the attributes. So for example, a person, the attribute for a person can be its weight, its height the color of his eyes, uh, etc. Behavior can be the person can work, or you can walk, or you can run, you can sleep. These are all actions, behaviors. So the example given me is that the state of a bank account will include the account number. So that will be a characteristic and its current balance. There's no any action or behavior here, just the attribute of a, an account. There it can be also the account type, the account number, and the current balance. Now the behavior associated with a bank account can include a deposit money in my bank account, or I withdraw, or I check the balance on my bank account. This would be an action I'm doing, so that would be the behavior. So classes, as we said earlier, is a, an object is defined by a class. So the class is like a template of an object. Or here we use the term blueprint. A class is the blueprint of an object. Also, a class uses methods to define the behaviors of the object. So we know, as we said earlier, class consists of two main things, which is the state and the behavior. Behavior always corresponds with the methods and also sometimes I may use the term function, but there's a difference between the function and the method. Both consist of statements or expressions to perform a specific task. But the difference is that a function does not belong to a class, but a method belongs to a class. So we always use the term method. Anytime we use the term method, we are referring to a function that belongs to a particular class. So a class that contains the main method of a Java program represents the entire program. And also a class represents a concept and an object represents the embodiment of that concept. So multiple objects can be created from the same class. Example, I have a class named vehicle. I can create an object car. I can create a, a, an object of a vehicle, let's say SUV trailer, tractor, all these are vehicles. So this is an example of a, 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 a class. So here we say class equal to a blueprint. So we can see the diagram here. So this would be a class. 
and we know the characteristics of this. Uh, this is a building, but it's not actual building. So the characteristics would be maybe <clears throat> the measurement of the and the building, the toilet, etc. So now from here, we can create our actual buildings now. So our actual three buildings here are the objects. So the blueprint is the class. So in programming, when we when we have a class, we don't say that we, uh, for example, we assign when we declare a class, we say class declaration. But we normally don't assign a memory. There's no memory location for class declaration because the actual object has not been created. But when we use the keyword new, we can dynamically allocate a memory space for an object based on the class. We may discuss, and this is again lecture one. So here we just want to understand the concept, the theory. Later on, we will get into the topic for object-oriented programming and we may know how to again declare class, how to write the code um, for a class, etc. So this is an example here. We have uh, the bank account again. This is a class. Now <clears throat> from the class bank account, you can see that we have created actual bank account for three customers. We have John's bank account, Bill's bank account, Mary's bank account, and also we have the balances of each other. <clears throat> so excuse me. So this would be the object. So an object is the realization. This is uh, here we have to allocate the memory. The memory. We, this is actual object, but again, this is just a template or a blueprint. So a class is the concept, and an object is the realization. Again, these lectures we just want to understand the theory concept. Also, in object-oriented programming, we have some techniques we use called the inheritance. The concept of inheritance is that we want to reduce our coding and also redundancy. I'll use the term rather, redundancy. For example, I create an, a, a class name, a person. A person have a last name, a first name. Then I create another class name, employee. Employee also have a last name and first name, and also including date of hired. Now, when I have these two classes in one program, I don't want to repeat the same last name and first name again. So what I'll do is that I'll say, okay, since employee is a person, why can't we just let employee inherit all the characteristics and also the behavior of a person? So this, in this case, we don't need to rewrite the code again. So that's the concept of inheritance, inheriting. So one class can be used to derive another via inheritance. So the, normally the term, in this case, the person will be the base class or the super class. And the, the employee, since employee is the one inheriting from person, so the employee can be the the child class, or sometimes we use the term subclass or derived class. So here we can see example, we have account, charge account, and bank account. So account is like the base class or the super class. Now we have different types of account, but maybe every account may have something attribute that is common among charge and bank account. So charge and bank account is going to inherit everything from account. Now in the bank account, we also have different two types, savings and checking account. So they are going to inherit everything from bank accounts since they have something common. So again, this will be the conclusion of uh, our unit one, again, lecture one, part three. And uh, thank you very much. In this lectures, again, we just trying to understand the concept of object-oriented techniques and what is a class, what is an object. And later on in the class, uh, in the course, we are going to, again, write the code how to use classes in our program. Again, thank you.